Hello, Nicole. Hey, Kate. How are you today? I'm buzzing. I mean, you and I... Buzzing. Buzzing. She's buzzing. (laughs) It's been a fun... I mean, like, you and I just saw each other three days ago, and we've chatted... Every day since. For podcasts, every day since. So it's been... Can't stop, won't stop podcasting. Like, you thought you could get rid of me? You can't. So... And you know what? I'm buzzing even more because we what a treat today we have we have such a treat today i am pinching myself truly that we're about to have this conversation something that you and i have been wanting to have for a long time um and this is on manifestation everybody this is on manifestation if you if you dream it you can do it Mm mm-hmm If you manifest it, you can make it happen. Exactly. And we've always said that. We've always said that. And so without further ado, this is our conversation with the one, the only, Miss Jamie Chadwick. She's a three-time W Series championship winner. She's an Indie Next, uh, what is it called? It's a feeder series. Indie Next feeder series. Uh, She's crushing it. She's here. She's there. She's everywhere. Jamie Chadwick. Jamie Chadwick. Hello. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me okay? And see me? Yes. Perfect. Cool. There is an indie car test going on. They've just stopped, but if it gets too loud, let me know. Okay. You know, Perfect. if it does, then that's really interesting background noise for this, and it's really authentic. <laughs> so it'll be perfect. <laughs> you put that over the top. It works great. Um, well, thank you for joining us. We're really excited to have you here today. Good. Thank you for having me. Uh, a lot of our community was is really just, I think, you know, start off with the basics. Is how did you first get become interested in motorsports? Is it something you know you grew up with with your family? And do you also have kind of an early memory of attending a race as a fan and kind of where the the passion for motorsports came from? It's a good question because I still can't really pinpoint exactly what it was. Um, I growing up, I didn't really know a huge amount about Formula One, a huge amount about motorsport. I didn't um, come from a racing background. My parents didn't race or anything like that. But we did grow up on the Isle of Man, my brother and I, um, which is a small island in between England and Ireland. And um, it's a lot of motorsport history. There's uh, something called the TT, which is a bike race. And there's quite a few other things um, that they have there. So I think that's kind of what sparked my initial interest, maybe. But it wasn't until I was a little bit older when my um, older brother um, started in go-karting and I kind of went to the track to watch him a few times that I just started to think, oh, maybe actually I'd like to give this a go. And it wasn't until after all of that and after I started in go-karting that I actually really became a fan of the sport and started to love Formula One and, and follow it. I love that. What was kind of, what was it that made you love it so much? Um, I always say there's so many things about motorsport. Like, it's not, you know, one thing that stands out. Um, when Before I got into racing, I did other sports and... I always felt competitive and I loved the feeling of doing well and having that kind of, I guess, level of success in sport. Um, But then when motorsport came along, the thing I guess that I liked the most is there's the speed element, there's the adrenaline, there's a big team element with it as well. There's obviously the mechanical kind of engineering part with the car. And for me, there was just so many different things that kind of added to to the sport and made it so much more colorful than maybe I thought it was um, at first. So that was a big part of it. I love that. So we know that you started your racing career alongside your brother as a teammate. Um, Must have been really, really special to be able to have that kind of opportunity. So can you tell us a little bit more about that dynamic and if you would ever do something like that again? Um, Oh, I don't know if I would do it again. Um, (laughs) Oh, now my brother and I. So I feel like that's a good thing. I don't know if I want to kind of compromise that. But yeah, when we started, I mean, I've just followed my brother. Um, He was the one that paved the way. Our family, to be honest, didn't know a huge amount about the sport. So it was my brother that would be the first person to kind of start and he'll learn things, try things, and then I'll come through and then kind of learn from, I guess, his mistakes a little bit. (laughs) Yeah, in our first years of of racing, he was a little bit more experienced. So we weren't really competing directly head to head. So it wasn't so bad, but then slightly later, um, well, I must have been about 14 and he would have been about 16, and we were kind of properly competing against each other. So um, at that point, um, that's why I felt sorry for my parents. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although um, it was nice that we could both do it together, none of us 
one of us was either happy and one of us was sad and it was never the both of us could be both happy so um yeah it was a, a challenging time i imagine in the family yeah <laughs> is your brother still um racing uh, he's not no so he stopped maybe five or six years ago okay uh, so now i'm the the only one flying the flag in the family <laughs> you're carrying the torch <laughs> forward <laughs> So, you know, you've been in a lot of different motor, seri motor series since you started, and how are you liking Indy NXT? Is it, like, how is it different from the FIA series you've been in, and do you think you see a path back to FIA series in the future, or are you kind of happy where you are right now? Um, I'm absolutely loving it, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, there's something that's just been really enjoyable this year. Uh, aside from sort of the on-track stuff, I think just off-track, the environment, the paddock, the team, everything I've, I've really, really loved. Um, I've really enjoyed traveling to different parts of America as well. Um, this weekend we're in Laguna Seca and I keep smiling because it's just honestly one of the coolest places I've ever been. So um, in that sense, I'm very happy here. Obviously, I want to be able to perform and get results and, and have success over here, but I definitely feel very happy in the environment. Um, ultimately, I want to make it to the highest level uh, and compete at the highest level and um, for sure that it does involve going back to Europe maybe at some point, but at the moment I'm looking at having as much success as I can have um, doing what I'm doing. I'm lucky enough to have this opportunity in Indy Next, um, have the support that I have and now I just want to make the best of that and have as much success over here as I can. Is there a place in America that you think would be really fun to have a, an Indy car race that there isn't one yet? Ooh, that's a good question. I um, wait. No, let me actually think about this because there's on our calendar uh, or on IndyCar's calendar, they go to um, Long Beach, which mm -hmm. is where I really want us to go because I think that's quite cool. But I remember when we raced in Texas at Cota. Um, that was one of the best races you know I've ever actually attended or been at um, in, in Formula One. So I feel like maybe if IndyCar could get a slight glimpse of that as well, that would be pretty cool. I feel like it's got to happen. Circuit of the Americas, Coda has every every racing series, so it's only it's only a matter of time. Exactly. <laughs> Do you? So speaking of races, what is your kind of typical race day look like how do you get into the zone what is your what is your routine um it's changed a lot over the years the older and maybe wiser i'm getting um the more comfortable i feel in my own skin and the more comfortable i feel doing just what i'm happy with with doing um and that doesn't involve a huge amount in terms of overthinking the process i'm pretty comfortable now knowing what works for me um a lot of the work happens sort of behind the scenes before the weekend so when I come to the weekend it's just about dialing in uh, and feeling comfortable um, I don't like to have any superstitions I don't like to have anything like that I always end up fixing it but a big thing for me is like physical preparation um, you know if I feel physically fit and I feel good in myself then I always go into a weekend feeling the best version of myself so um, that's become a big thing outside of the, the race weekends for me is there anything you have like a treat after the race where you're like okay like I'm, I'm treating myself to something nice after after my <laughs> races, or are you, you know, pretty straight and narrow? No, no, I, I like a treat. I'm not too bad on food because I like, um, I generally like quite good food, but I, um, I do love a glass of red wine. So mm. uh, that ends Feel up being. <laughs> You're in, we are in good company. We also love a good glass of red yeah, wine. I like on the flight home quite often. Um, my favorite thing to do if. Um, I'm in the position to do it. I will have a cheese board and a glass of red wine, and that will be my like cool Amazing. Like, I'm happy on a Sunday night. So um, yeah, that, that's probably my guilty guilty pleasure. That's Kate's um, go-to travel hack for um, overseas flights is just uh, one or two glasses of red wine um, to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm really strict on the way out. So yeah. always on the way out, um, really strict, kind of. <laughs> pretty good and then uh, on the way back I'm like okay I can treat myself to this and yeah you did it you did something really cool that weekend you worked really hard and you deserve cheese and wine exactly, exactly. life's simple pleasures exactly. <laughs> I so in your career you've had some really really interesting teammates you know you started off competing against your brother and then you were teammates with David Coulthard and my personal favorite that I just learned about is that you raced alongside Paul Hollywood um <laughs> which I'm obsessed with. And so I have to ask, like, who has been your favorite teammate that you've ever had and who would be your dream teammate to have someday? Ooh. Um, 
favourite pool was very fun. Um, we did a <laughs> championship together, and it was a year that I was still studying, so it was only a part year. So it was very good fun. But um, oh, I think favourite teammate outside of maybe Paul. Um, I've had a few. I've always had good teammates. There's no one I would be like, God, I don't want to ever be teammates with them again. Um, <laughs> it's nice. We're enjoying this year. I'm really enjoying. Um, I was just having a moment with my teammates actually because this is our last race, and we're still like, it's weird. This is probably going to be our last last race as teammates. So. I'm happy with the environment um, this year. Hunter, um, James and Louis, um, they're all well, Irish, English and Australian, so a bit of a good mix. Um, <laughs> very good guys. Um, and then Dream Teammate, I would say there's a few like obvious ones, I guess, but I would definitely put Lewis Hamilton in there. I don't think it would be a Dream yeah. Teammate at all because it would be impossible to beat. <laughs> <laughs> You would learn. You would learn a lot, though. So in that aspect, he would be a perfect teammate. I think just I'm fascinated. The older I get, the more I think about this. I'm fascinated by elite performance. Mm -hmm. and I feel like in a lot of sports, you can see very closely, you know, what they do and how they go about what they're yeah. doing. Uh, but most people you don't fully get that. So I would love to just see exactly what he does and how he does it, and ultimately how he's become as successful as he is. Yeah. yeah. Are there any other athletes in other sporting areas that you really draw inspiration from since you, you like to learn from kind of those elites? Yeah, I mean, I follow a lot of different sports and I think there's different approaches in different sports for different things. But I think Serena Williams was a big one in tennis. Mm -hmm. um, now kind of following more tennis, it's very cool to see how she's really paved the path in a sport mm -hmm. like that. And then in football now, um, it's really, or soccer, it's really cool to see, especially for the for us in the UK, the Lionesses have been huge in inspiring yeah. a lot of us um, in what we're doing. So I'm um, just seeing the quality of female athletes that are coming through now um, is, is very cool. It's very inspiring. Um, okay, wait, we want to talk a little bit more about Paul Hollywood because this is just so, <laughs> so fun. So can you tell us a little bit more, uh, you know, about your experience racing with him and, you know, if the the roles were reversed and you were on the Great British Bake Off, would you be able to get a handshake from Paul Hollywood in his bread week? Bread week. <laughs> That's probably not bread week, actually. I'm not the best with bread. I do like baking. I think a lockdown thing. Because this is the shame is we were teammates back in 2016 or we worked together okay. in 2016 and he was awesome. It was really funny. He's got a big passion for racing. So, um, yeah, it was very fun to kind of be part of his first journey into racing and helping through that a little bit and then also I was very young and doing my own thing so I'd be, for him to also mentor and help me in, in other sort of aspects of it as well so um, it was really fun um, I really enjoyed it but the baking side was funny because I always wanted him to get come with some baked goods to the track <laughs> and he never did and I remember we had a few mechanics that, that every now and then would try and get a handshake or whatever <laughs> I mean, now, since um, post-lockdown uh, and things, I love baking, I love cooking, so now I kind of wish I was teammates with him, so I just, <laughs> like, try my lemon fizzle cake, try my banana bread. Uh, so, yeah. Are you, do you have his phone number? Do you ever text him photos of your, your baking experiments and say, can you rate this? Do you think I'm this not, is good? I'm, I'm not, actually, I've not said um, anything of what I've baked, but he, he sends me messages quite often. It's, it's really nice to just look on my phone because, like, he does keep up with what I'm up to and it's been a long time since you know I actually seen him in, in person and he'll always um, send a message saying good luck or if he's seen a result saying well done which is is really cool That's and so nice I it's nice to, to know that people that you see are the same way that they are like on TV and like he's always so nice like obviously very strict as a judge but like just so nice and so it's nice to see hear that he's just like that you know in real yeah, life too honestly, honestly i can i couldn't say a bad word about him so um yeah no he's a, he's a great guy well, well we i think that next you. time you bake you have to send him a photo yeah. and say am i star baker this week <laughs> with this treat that i made <laughs> yeah i was gonna say can't wait to see you Maybe on not. the celebrity episode of <laughs> the next Great British Bake Off. It's going to be amazing. I couldn't deal with that pressure. That too <laughs> wow, too much pressure. <laughs> she can race. She can race race cars, but British Bake Off is too much pressure. That's very interesting. <laughs> um, okay, switching gears a little bit. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of conversations about uh, racing series 
devoted towards female racers. And so obviously we saw W Series come to an end, which you were so dominant in for so many years. Um, and then kind of right on the tail of that, the announcement of F1 Academy under Susie Wolf. So, you know, I think you have a really unique perspective on the two of them. And do you think that, you know, from what we've seen that F1 Academy is set up for success and why or why not? And kind of like, what are your thoughts on the, the evolution? Yeah, I feel like there's quite a few parts of, well, of this whole topic, to be honest. Um, yeah. First and foremost, which is what I know so well is, is W Series. And um, W Series for me is quite funny because I was actually having this conversation with someone last night. And when it first came about, it had its critics. I was one of the critics. I didn't understand it. And I did it, and I'll be open in saying this, I did this because I hadn't really had another option. I didn't have much else. Um, a chance in terms of to be continuing single seater racing so that's why I did it but I never never ever thought that it would have the success that it had and I think W Series did a great job marketing it and placing it in the position they did putting it mm -hmm. with TV coverage ultimately on the F1 package but I think really what made it successful was the appetite for <laughs> women in the sport which yeah. uh, is definitely something that there clearly is so whilst it wasn't sustainable and it couldn't you know continue it First of all, they did a huge thing for my career and completely yeah. trapped for my career, but also a lot of the other female talents. But like I said, whilst it wasn't sustainable, there was definitely something there. There's a product, there's something that, you know, people are engaging with and they're interested in, whether they're young female aspiring racing drivers or mechanics or engineers, or they just are interested in, in following something like that. It had interest. And so I wasn't surprised when F1 Academy or F1 came in um, with uh, the idea of having doing something similar because there is success there. Um, the difference I think now with F1 Academy, which is great, is Susie's involved. And I think Susie is a proper powerhouse and she's the one that is going to be great at taking it to the next level. Um, I don't think we should be quite so critical to kind of define it as success or failure because I think that's yeah. what a lot of people did with W Series, particularly at the end of it. Um, they deemed it a failure and it's like, that's not been a failure at all. It's had three very successful years and it's done a huge amount for the sport. So. I don't think we need to be as um, you know black and white as that, but ultimately yeah. there's a, a long way to go in terms of what we're we're needing from the sport to, to get women to the top and to Formula One. And everyone's not going to do F1 Academy is not going to do that overnight. It's not going right. to do that in one to two years. But if it can play a role in the next kind of big um, movement of the sport, then I think it's going to be a great thing. Yeah, I think that's a really great point and something that we have always said when we've talked about this is we're big proponents for progress over perfection. And it's kind of like you said, unfair for people to come out and say, this isn't perfect. This is not like what they're doing is not the right thing. And, and I think, like you said, there's an appetite for it. So even just to have something else come in and have someone like Susie at the helm, I think is, is progress. And it's something that can only kind of get better from here. And that's, you know, what we should be focusing on whether rather than saying okay after this season is it a success or did it fail it's it's progress and seeing how it can adapt throughout the years and continually get better is like what's most important exactly that i think um progress that's the best way of putting it it's, it's not going to happen overnight and it shouldn't happen overnight when i read often comments about me being in formula one next year or even last year it, it, that's not how the sport works it's not it doesn't work like that for any male racing driver it doesn't it won't work like that for any female racing driver but getting closer to it and making this, as we say, progress, that's what's going to make the difference. And I think that's what F1 Academy has a great opportunity to go out and achieve. And yeah, I'm excited about it because I'm a big believer of everything and anything we can now do to help women in the sport is a good thing. Um, yes. I love seeing so many more young female girls get the opportunity. There's a lot of talent coming through. Um, yeah, so I, I'm excited. We are too. Um, we wish we we wish that we could watch make it easier to watch uh, F1 Academy. But again, progress over perfection. Maybe next season. I think that stuff they they're aware of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. What is not maybe being the easiest this year. They're aware of that, and next year I think that's where it's going to start to turn a corner, and it'll be great um, for that reason. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have any hobbies or interests outside of motorsport? Obviously, we know that your life is dedicated to racing cars, but you obviously have to like other things as well. <laughs> Red wine and cheese, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um 
Yeah, that is my hobby. Um, <laughs> no, I, I'm a typical racing cliche, racing driver cliche of I love golf, I love cycling. <laughs> like a lot of these kind of other sports that we can do outside of racing. Um, they're quite big ones actually now. Um, and it's nice because it, especially the cycling I like because it means I can stay fit and healthy and it's part of my training, but also it's something that I love and enjoy doing. So um, yeah, I'd say golf and cycling, generally other sports um, kind of end up being, being the things I like to do. Um, what is your favorite track to drive on and why? Ooh. I know you said Coda was one that you really liked, but is there any other tracks that you're like this? If you could only drive one track for the rest of your life, what would it be? Yeah, I mean, Coda, I feel like that kind of comes more under the whole vibe and the atmosphere and everything. And I think with that, I put Silverstone um, in terms of just all round experience. Yeah. Uh, home track, home crowd. The track's great, but it's more the whole experience. In terms of sheer driving um, experience, I do think this weekend could change this because this track looks amazing um, at Laguna Seca. But I love there's Road America, which is in the UK, uh, in the US, that I love. And also, um, when I was young, I did the Nurburgring 24 hour, and the whole Nordsch line is unbelievable. So, um, yeah. yeah, I've given you about five different tracks there. But That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. The more the merrier. I think it's it's really incredible to hear you just kind of list off all of these I- iconic tracks that you've been able to compete on. So just a testament to what you've been able to accomplish. So, okay. So one thing we wanted to touch on was, I don't know if you heard, I'm assuming you did, about Danica Patrick's recent comments about women in motorsport. Uh, she said, at the end of the day, I think that the nature of the sport is masculine, it's aggressive. You have to, you know, handle the car, not only just the car because that's a skill, but the mindset that it takes to be really good at something that's not normal in a feminine mind. Now, we just wanted to know what your thoughts were on this uh, perspective that Danica Patrick has and if you uh, had anything to say to young women who might have heard this and had kind of a second thought about joining motorsports. Yeah, I mean, I I really hope that there aren't, well, no one's heard that and thought, you know, that's going to put me off because I I don't think, I definitely know that wouldn't have been Danica's um, intention with it. And I think for me, Danica is someone I massively look up to Um, now, especially that I'm over here in the States and I understand better what she did. Um, It's impressive. And I think that's kind of partly where she's coming from is what she did in the sport back then before the whole women in motorsport was a topic. She really didn't have to take herself to a level. outside of probably maybe her comfort zone but it would have been outside of my comfort zone um, she really took herself um, to a level to be able to be competitive with the guys that she was racing and both on and off the track she adopted this kind of um, yeah approach that did mean that she had to be like that in my opinion um, I don't think that's so much the case anymore um, I feel confident I can be the way that I am um, and I feel like I'm able to be like that in, in the sport and I like to think that, you know, that's kind of um, still adopting, you know, the approach of that, well, many other young girls can adopt. Um, it, it doesn't change so much. So I think the way I see it is, is slightly different. Um, I think I say this a lot. When I started in the sport, um, I would try and be like one of the guys and I'd try yeah. and be like boys just because you fit in like that. And that's the group you're around and you try and sort of go with their jokes and I kind of always regret being like that and now I just want to be myself and I would encourage any young girls just to be themselves and the sport is open to that I don't think you know it will come naturally to you you'll either love the sport want to be in it want to be racing people side by side or you won't I don't think that's defined by gender um and so yeah like I said it, it will come naturally to you and I would just say to to stick with what you feel um, is true to yourself because I think that's the most important. But on the flip side of that, I do see, you know, the fact that Danica did really have to, to hustle hard for what she um, she achieved back when she did. Yeah, it's nuance is very important. The... Yeah, to kind of think about it in terms of, you know, someone's opinion and kind of where it comes from, what it stems from. And, you know, a lot of people probably saw that and it was just an absolute no and, and didn't like it. But I think it's a good point to kind of look back and, you know, think about what her perspective was when when she was saying it so I think that's a good reminder as well it's hard to be the first person to do something um, and you know when you're paving the way it's it's not an easy journey so exactly honestly um, yeah it's the sports changing a lot more than people realize and it's, it's yeah. so more 
accommodating, I believe, um, than perhaps it was um, for the likes of her because, yeah, back then it was a very different sport. Yeah, for sure. So I know we're coming up on time, so we have a couple kind of quick fire questions for you, uh, a little bit easier, a little lighter. Um, so first question is, what is the last book you read that you would recommend people read? Oh, um, I wish it was something more educational, but I read, um, well, actually, I haven't finished it yet. I think, it, you know, the, it starts with us, it ends with us. Mm -hmm. Colleen, Colleen Hoover. Yeah, I've read a few of Colleen Hoover books because those are my like switch off moments. So yeah. Uh, you're love you're that. talking to the right crowd. We love, we love those books here. So, <laughs> I mean, I was going to say, I wish I had something a little bit. I was going to say, let's get, let's, we're starting a book club. We're going to have cheese boards and red wine and Colleen oh, Hoover books is right. what I'm, what I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the other book that I am actually also reading a little bit at the moment is, uh, is it called Greenlight by Matthew McConaughey? Um, really, really, I don't know. It's an author, okay. I think. Um, I think it's called Greenlight, but it's... Is it like an autobiography or is it fiction? Yeah. Uh, no, no, okay. it's autobiography. Um, nice. Autobiography. Um, it's about Matthew McConaughey, but it's very okay. interesting. Cool. He's a very interesting guy, so I'm not surprised that that is a good one. We'll have to check that out. Cool. Next one is your favorite movie. Um, that's like a really hard question. To it's a loaded about. question, it is. <laughs> I, this is really going to paint me in like a very uneducational life, but I watched Just Go With It again the other night, and I love that. So film. good. <laughs> okay, Jimmy, it seems like we could be really good friends because that's one of my favorite Adam Sandler movies. <laughs> yeah, I, wanna, I really want to lie and like some documentary or something, but just, yeah. <laughs> Jamie, something about this podcast you should know is that we don't take ourselves very seriously here and we like to have fun. So it's great to hear that you also are like, you know what, I could say something super educational, but I'm going to be really honest and say <laughs> Adam Sandler and Colleen Hoover. <laughs> exactly. And the last question is, what is a song that you've had on repeat lately? Oh, that's true. I might look because I've definitely got a few that I listen to. I've been okay, really continuing the truth, uh, theme, but I've had a lot of Harry Styles on recently. Uh. Um, I really like, um, I've been listening to um, it's an artist, I did, I'm plugging them beyond belief because I did the thing on them the other day, but Jungle, um, I could give you a song, but there's oh no, Joseph, Joseph is who I've been listening to a lot. Mm. Okay, okay. You'll have to you'll have to put together a little playlist so everyone knows what your your go to songs of the moment are. I'm sure lots of people would love to know that. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I've not once they listened to the playlist. They're very good. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Well, those are all the hard hitting quick fire questions we had for you. Uh, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us today. Uh, best of luck this weekend. Um, you know, you've had a you've had a really great season. We can't wait to see what you do next. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon. Right, cheers, guys. Thank right. you. Thank you Thanks, so Jamie. much. Bye. Bye. I love her. The girls are getting it done. The girls the are girls. having good convos. <laughs> I'm obsessed. They're being like Colleen Hoover and Adam Sandler. <laughs> like, yeah. That's us. That's for TG1. I want to be like, have you ever read an F1 romance? <laughs> yes or no. Have you read A Court of Thorns and Roses? <laughs> I really want to say like? it. I know she was like, oh, it's going to be uneducated. I was like, please say it. I was it, like, please, please say, it. <laughs> say it. I'm adding you to our group chat if you do. You're coming, you're coming to the, the um, seminar, the summit, when the next book comes out. I hope you're ready. I'm dead. <laughs> fuck IndyCar. I know it's at the beginning of the season, but guess what? You're going to have to take some PTO, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. Truly incredible. She's such an icon. She's a legend. She is the moment. Yeah, that was so fun. I love when, I love to just hear from people about just like everyday things also yeah. i just can't i can't get over the fact that she raced with paul hollywood I know. that was the craziest thing that i've ever like found out and now i feel like i have to go do some research and like find some videos of paul hollywood racing a race car like yeah i every so, interest of mine so what i'm hearing is we have to get paul hollywood on the podcast we next. have to get paul hollywood on the podcast <laughs> to talk about all of this like we have to it's that's so... just what it is Remember the last time we really got 
shit on on the internet a lot was when we said that we were going to buy Haas with TG on a Bitcoin and put <laughs> Jamie and Mick on a team together. <laughs> and everyone was so mad at us. <laughs> Jamie would have been mad at us, too. She even said she's like, when people joke about me being an F1, that's not how it works. I'm like, damn, you and our haters. <laughs> She she created accounts and she was like, that's not how it works, guys. <laughs> Jamie, but it could be if we have the money. That's if how it works. If you team, have enough money. We would just put you there. I'll get you an FIA super license. Whatever I'll buy needs it. to be done. I'll pay people off. We have our own Bitcoin. We have our own Bitcoin. We're rich. <laughs> okay, you're not understanding this hypothetical situation. We're rich. We're billionaires. We do what we want. We get to do anything. <laughs> this is like how Lauren Stroll bought a team for his son. We will be buying a team for Jamie. Exactly. We are the exactly. new Lauren Strolls. <laughs> and our co-sponsors are going to be Kindle Unlimited and Adam Sandler. <laughs> okay, Amazon money. Cloud? No, Kindle Unlimited. That's Kindle where the Unlimited. real money's at. That is where the real money's at. <laughs> I am like can't believe that do they make money <laughs> and how well we have to pay for a subscription fee that's true so it's not technically unlimited because I'm paying and then they also don't let you include you have to return some books so it's not like really unlimited. I know it's really yeah. dumb I had so to do that the other day to. I had to do that the other day I had to return some books and I was like I'm pretty sure I paid for these they and then I was like to. I actually didn't pay for them because it's Kindle Unlimited but like I feel like I should I deserve to have them still I agree with you wholeheartedly thank you I'd love to see Jamie's Kindle library. I know. I want to see it really bad. I want to see it so bad now. I want to be like, girly, what are you? You, you play, I think she played it safe with the Colleen Hoover. I think so, too. I think so, too. I know she's, she's wearing an <laughs> She's playing it safe. She didn't want to admit she's wearing, reading fairy smut. <laughs> this is but on this space. podcast, you're, this is a safe space. Safe space. You can admit it. <laughs> you can admit. You can talk about it on the internet. Like we do all the time. <laughs> we're not afraid. We're not afraid. And we're not judging. Um, anyway, that was such a dream come true. What a fun. Yeah. And now I'm like, okay, well, we have to get to Indy next next year yeah. to see her. So, mm -hmm. and make this, and I will be bringing red wine and cheese boards, obviously. Yeah. Where I, next time she's in New York, she's got to stop by the wine bar. Yeah. I'll treat her to a really good cheese board and glass of wine. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, she's for the girls. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. And so I hope you all learned about a new side of Jamie today because I feel like looking at her social media, I feel like she's really kind of all focused on yeah. her racing persona. And so it's really fun, like you said, to be able to kind of talk to people about other things and other things like and you know what's your favorite movie like what's for your book that's the kind of stuff we on this podcast want to know <laughs> yeah. and I think you know we were talking about this prior to talking with Jamie and you know when we were coming up with questions and obviously our first thoughts were like we got to talk about women in motorsports and and I think you know obviously we we peppered some of those questions in but I think that's kind of also a tired narrative and mm -hmm. it's you know we don't talk to men about being a man in motorsports right. like just because she's a, a woman in motorsport doesn't mean that that is kind of all she's qualified to talk about um right. so wanted to make sure we were very conscious of that and and asking her things about her because she's not just a woman in motorsport she's a person women can do it all women can do it don't all forget. and don't we're asking forget. about it all we have we're layers asking we're like onions we're like onions <laughs> this is like a parfait anybody <laughs> You tell me one person that doesn't like a parfait. Ain't nobody don't like parfait. <laughs> Kate's that's in my, her track uh, era. That's my favorite movie. <laughs> I wanted to be like, oh, what's your favorite movie? Do you want to know mine? <laughs> it's Shrek. I'm actually but in a I literally, it, it took everything in me not to be like when she was like, just go with it. Kevin, or what's his name? Jason. Or when they're like, <laughs> don't pour over me. <laughs> it's literally my the best movie. I love it so much. It's a, Jennifer Aniston slays in that movie. She really does. She really does. And then the little girl has a fake British accent. That's you and me. That was you and me. That was <laughs> you and me in the that's Ferrari. That's me growing up. That's me growing up. That was me at the Ferrari Trento uh, gourmet <laughs> dinner when everyone was like, do your <laughs> British accent. And I was like, guys, you don't want to hear me do that. Hello, Gavina. <laughs> well, it's funny because Jamie's from Bath. I know. I thought I, I was, was laughing. Like, me too, girly. Me too. <laughs> 
my alter ego is also from Bath, so <laughs> are we cousins? We might be. <laughs> We got to end this. We got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. Oh, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this fun little extra ep. If you guys have listened to our podcast for any amount of time, you know that we have constantly talked about kind of our dream guests. And we're really just taking them off this summer. We are. This is the summer summer of achieving our dreams. We've got Gunther. We've got Jamie. Next up is Susie. For sure. For sure. And then a driver. I know it. I know it. I know that to be I true. I know it. I know it. So stay Maybe tuned, Maybe a guys. wag. You know would I would love die. a wag, too. You know I would die. Who do you think of all the wags we could get on, like, realistically? I think Kika. She, I think she would come on. I think she would come on. I think she'd have a good time, too. We could also, we could catfish Carmen and say that we're a fine, oh, a business fine? woman, a finance podcast. Two we're girls, at- two girls, one finance. TG1F. Two girls, one, yeah, TG1F <laughs> actually stands for two girls, one fi- financial analyst. Um, and you're the financial analyst that's joining our podcast, obviously. Um, obviously. And she'd come on ready to talk about girl bossing and be like, so where do you get your clothes? Who's your tailor? <laughs> I have to know because I know that you didn't buy those clothes that fit you that well. Who's your tailor? Mm. You're a short, you're a short girl like me. Spill the beans. You're a small queen like I am, and I need to know who tailors your clothes so impeccably because I'm looking for one, and I will fly to London for that. Don't test me. I will bring every article of clothing that I own with me to London to all get tailored at the same time. <laughs> I'm dead. Okay, guys. Okay. Until thursday no i don't know until next time until, until when, next time. whenever the hell this comes out until the next episode because like we said we're ha- we're just dropping the- we're dropping episodes left and right can't get rid of us. can't get rid of us <laughs> but until no. then we'll see we'll you see on you the on internet, internet. bye, bye.